Good morning, friends, and to those who would call me their enemy, you are welcome. It is Thursday, February 23, I believe, about 1 a.m. I don't know what's up, but the Lord, anymore, he's getting me up. He's starting to speak to me about midnight. You know, it's the midnight hour, isn't it? Where we are, so... Normally, in the past, it's, it's usually 2, 3 a.m. That, that he's releasing so much to me. But recently, it's been about the midnight hour he begins speaking. So anyway, I want to release what he began releasing to me yesterday. And um, I want to begin in... Isaiah chapter 53, verse 13. And I'm just going to recite, recite Isaiah 52, 13 through Isaiah 53. I think it's 13. It begins with, Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. This is the Father speaking of the Son, Jesus, Mashiach. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high he shall deal prudently he shall he shall do according to the father's pre predeterminate counsel behold my servant shall deal prudently he shall be exalted and extolled and be very high not just at the right hand of the father when he ascended to the right hand of the father but exalted and extolled, extolled in the hearts of men, enthroned there. This is what Isaiah saw in Isaiah chapter 6, when he said, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up. He saw the king of glory in the hearts of men and the glory filling the earth. In the year the king Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. We are the temple. And the train filled the temple. And above it stood the seraphim, each having six wings. And with twain covered they their feet, and twain covered they their face, and twain did they fly. And one said to another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Enthroned in his people. So back to Isaiah chapter 52, verse 13. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. As many as were astonished, astonished at him, his visage, his face was so marred more than any man. Because he took on that, all of that which was on us. We, were, we didn't look anything like we were created to be. And he took that all upon himself. His visage, his face was so marred more than any man. And his form more than the sons of men. So shall he sprinkle many nations. The blood is sprinkling that cleanses our heart from an evil conscience that we can begin to see who we really are. We can begin to look like we were created to be. So shall he sprinkle many nations. The kings of the earth shall shut their mouths at him. For that which hath not been told them shall they see the mercy, and that which they had not heard, the truth, the gospel, shall they consider. Who hath believed our report, the gospel? And to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and he is rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. 
and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, and we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as his sheep before her shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. And he was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. He made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Because he hath done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief when he made his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. The pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him the portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and he made intercession for the transgressors. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are a great teacher. That you lead us into all truth. That the Son of Righteousness would arise upon our hearts. I thank you for bringing forth what you'd have me bring forth. In this hour. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to title this Led as a Lamb to the Slaughter, the Way of Peace. Isaiah chapter 59, verse 8 says, the way of peace they have not known. That was true then, and it is true now, except for a very, very small remnant that understand this way of peace. Who really understand the ways of the Lord at all. Because these foundational truths have been lost I was, I've never been taught them. That's Holy Spirit had to lead me into these things. And they're, they're foundational truths. I mean, this is foundational stuff. What are the paths of the Lord? What are his ways? That's foundational stuff. How can you walk somewhere when you don't even know what the paths are? And you don't even know what the ways are. As it says in Jeremiah 6.16, Stand ye in the ways. I say, Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old or ancient or it's the olam as the Hebrew, the eternal paths. Ask for the eternal paths. Where is the good way? The way of love and walk therein and you shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. They wanted to walk after the flesh. They didn't want to walk after the spirit. So these ways of the Lord are the ways of righteousness, holiness, and peace. Whereby we enter into union with Christ 
and these eternal paths are the paths of mercy and truth. Moses cried out, show me your ways, teach me your paths. David, in Psalm 25, said, show me your ways, teach me your paths. And verse 10 of Psalm 25, David said, all the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth unto such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. This is what it means to walk in the spirit, to be rooted and grounded in love, is to walk in in mercy and truth through the ways of righteousness, holiness, and peace. What is peace? The way of peace, it's walking in the very steps of Jesus. In the priesthood, in the Melchizedek priesthood. This is the way of peace. Yesterday morning I awoke and um, when I had looked at my notifications that morning, um, somebody had tagged me in a post in Facebook and just posted this really um, <laughs> nasty thing, um, calling me a great deceiver and... Um, and, you know, just really, really, you know, pretty vicious. But you know what? I, I don't even... There was a time where maybe that, like, it actually hurt a little bit. Or, you know, I was like, whoa. I didn't, I didn't even respond like that at all. I was like, yeah, bring it on. I mean, something shifted. So here, here's the thing. If... If those things really like hurt, it's because the enemy still has a place in you, in that area. You know, Jesus came, Jesus said, you know, the prince of this world cometh and he has nothing in me. The guy can't move me, you know, he has nothing in me. He cannot manipulate me. And I'm not saying I'm there yet. But he's taking me somewhere because that may have like hurt a little bit or even like, oh my gosh. I mean, this guy put out a public post with, he tagged my name and put this scathing thing out on me. I mean, just ripping me to shreds, right? And I'm like, I didn't even care. I mean, I cared in that what I did is I immediately went to the throne. I took this person that I don't even know. I took him before the father to the courts of heaven. I took him before the Father and said, Father, have mercy. Forgive him. And, and even mercy for myself in any, any way I missed it, right? But I said, Father, have, have mercy and dismiss this case. Bless this man. You know, Jesus said, You've heard it said in Matthew chapter 5, I think it's 18. You've heard it said, love your neighbors and hate your enemies. But I say unto you, love your enemies. This is what it means. It's to walk in the way of peace. Love your enemies. Do good to those that hate you. Bless those that curse you. All, all these things were pretty much in here, right? <laughs> Pray for those that despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the children of my Father in heaven. For he makes the sun rise upon the evil and the good. He sendeth forth rain upon the just and the unjust. Be therefore merciful, as your Father in heaven is merciful. What are you supposed to do to your enemies or those that perceive you as the enemy? You're to bless them. You're to pray for them. You're to do good to them. You're to be merciful towards them. That's the love of God. You don't, you don't respond with vitriol back at them when it came out of, that, out of their heart. You don't respond in likewise. I leave those posts up. If, if I, di I didn't even ask him to take it down, right? I didn't even respond. 
because I knew the vitriol that came out of that, it was like, it wouldn't matter if I even said bless him, it would have just... So I just took it straight to the courts of heaven. That's the priesthood. That's the priesthood. That is a lamb going to the slaughter and opening not its mouth. What does that mean? He wasn't like, Jesus was innocent, right? But what were lambs? Lambs laid down their life. They were the sacrificial animal under the old covenant. The morning and evening sacrifice was that lamb slain, the sin offering. And so Jesus was led as the lamb to the slaughter. And he opened not his mouth. He didn't go, I'm innocent. Look at them. They're wrongfully accusing me. No. He took it upon himself. And then he took it to the Father and said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Let us lamb to the slaughter as a sheep before his shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off of the land living. Now I'm missing something here. So, for, no, because for, it says, For they all like sheep have gone astray. They have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. See, that's the iniquity of going our own way, our own will. That's, that's joining ourselves to the spirit of Antichrist. See, Lucifer was perfect in all his ways until iniquity was found in him. And so, we all like sheep have gone astray. So what he's saying is, we're to be of his nature, like a lamb, a sheep that lays down its life for others to walk in this love. But we went astray. The way of peace, they have not known. They won't lay down their life. They won't love like this in this mercy, as my father is merciful. And so Jesus took that upon him, that iniquity, and took it before the father and said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And you could say, of course they knew what they were doing. They don't. They don't. This guy didn't know what he was doing. He really didn't. He thought it was righteous anger. He did. He thought it was righteous anger. But it was actually a murderous spirit. You know that Judas, who betrayed Jesus, why did that rise up in him? Because it was Mary that, what, what, was it Mary that, that anointed Jesus' feet and washed his feet in her hair with, with, with this precious ointment? The spike nard, which was worth, what, a hundred denarii or something? And, and Judas became furious? Because he was like, we could have sold that and, and, and taken that money and given it to poor. But no, he, he, he was a thief. That's why he was really. But, but it was like this righteous anger rose up in him. What was that? <laughs> it actually was joining himself to the spirit of Antichrist. It wasn't a righteous anger. But yet, in the person, that's how it's perceived. In the religious mind, it's like, this is righteous anger. They're deceiving my friend. And then they go about to murder you. That's the spirit that murdered Christ, the Antichrist spirit. The Antichrist spirit counterfeits itself as the Holy Spirit. It's the counterfeit Holy Spirit. And those that are walking it think that they're, they're doing what's right. In righteous anger, you're deceiving my friend, and then they go about to murder you.
It was the religious that murdered Christ. It was the spirit of Antichrist that murdered Christ. A spirit that the religious joined themselves to. There's only two tables we can eat at. The table of the Lord in the upper room where we eat of the bread and the wine. The wine representative of the mercy of Christ, the blood of Christ, the blood of the covenant, but it's the mercy. It's walking in forgiveness towards all. It's receiving his, his mercy and walking in it. And what's the bread? It's his body. He was the word made flesh. He was the truth. We have mercy and truth. Those are the things that we need to restore our identity. But there's the other table, the table of the enemy, that Proverbs chapter 4, 17 speaks of, where it says they eat the bread of wickedness and they drink the wine of violence. That table is juxtaposed to the table of Christ. It is the table of the enemy. The bread of wickedness is the opposite of the truth. It's the lie. It's the lie about who people are. It's the accusation that says, no, you're evil. Or I'm evil. I'm unworthy. It's, it's those lies of the enemy. That's the bread of wickedness. It's the lie. And what's the wine of violence? If, if, if the Lord's table, his, his wine, his was mercy, it was forgiveness. The wine of violence is unforgiveness. The wine of violence is bitterness, which leads to murder. That's why it's called the wine of violence. When we have bitterness, unforgiveness, and we haven't allowed the Lord to heal that from our heart. If we're not careful, we will enter into an agreement with spirit of Antichrist. We are. If we're, if we're not allowing the Lord to cleanse those things out of our heart, we're being joined to spirit of Antichrist, which is the spirit of murder. Jesus says, the prince of this world cometh through the spirit of Antichrist, and he has nothing in me. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. We, 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 we were no longer walking in the ways of the Lord, the way of righteousness, holiness, peace. No longer walking in the eternal paths of mercy and truth of who we are and perceiving other people for who they are. Even our enemies seeing righteousness looking down from heaven, as it says in Psalm 85, seeing them through mercy's eyes and not condemning them, but taking them before the Father and seeing them as he sees them. He says, Father, have mercy, forgive them, that's not who they are. Dismiss this case so that the enemy has no place in their life. See, that guy, whether he was right or wrong, in that accusation and, and the vitriol of it, he was coming into agreement with Antichrist. He was eating from the enemy's table of bitterness. And I don't know where that's rooted in. He, You know, right? I mean... He was abused. I don't know, right? I'm not judging him. But in doing that, when we do that, we eat from the enemy's table. We drink of the wine of violence, this bitterness, this unforgiveness, and we're joining ourselves with the spirit of murder. 
and the enemy then has an accusation against us. He, you just took off my table. You just ate from my table and entered into covenant with me. I now have access into your life. And him doing that to me, that opened a door for the enemy in his life. And I went before the Father to, to, to cut that thing off. This is what it means to walk in the way of peace. The way of peace they have not known is to walk in the priesthood, is to walk in the very steps of Christ, of mercy and truth, mercy and truth, to restore people's identity, to take them before the Father. This is what Jesus was talking about in John chapter 20. In verse 18, I believe it says, this is when, when, the, when his disciples were, were up in the upper room, right? And, and they were hiding from the Jews for fear of the Jews. And after Jesus had ascended to the Father, he, he appeared in their midst. And he said, peace unto you. And he showed them his hands and his side, where he, he performed the mercy, where water and blood poured out of his side, grace and truth. And he said unto them, peace unto you. He said unto them again, peace unto you. See, he's leading them into the way of peace, the priesthood. He said unto them, peace unto you. As the Father has sent me, even so do I send you into the way of peace. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. How was Jesus? How did the Father send Jesus? He sent us, he sent Jesus into the world, and we were his enemies, right? We were his enemies. He went as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was totally set apart to the Father. He was perfect and holy. He had an enemy, had nothing in him. And we, like sheep, are to walk like him. We, as lamb, are to walk after him. These are those, in Revelation chapter 14, who will follow the lamb wherever he will go. That's the priesthood. That's walking in mercy. As the Father has sent me, even do I send you into the way of peace. The way of reconciliation. As God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, now has been committed to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, now God is in Christ in us, reconciling the world unto him. That's what he wants, right? If we'll walk in it, He said unto them, Peace unto you, as the Father has sent me, even so now do I send you. And what did he do? He breathed on them. Whew. Receive the Holy Spirit. There's a depth of revelation I'm not going to release on that right now. It Well, I'll just say this. It's twofold. The breath of God is twofold. It's the Ruach and the Neshama. We see in Job chapter 33, verse 4, the Spirit of God, the Ruach of God made me, the breath, the Neshema of the Almighty has given me life. These words, Ruach and Neshema, they're both used of breath, they're both used of spirit, they're both used of wind in the scriptures. So they're of like substance, but they're 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 different attributes of his breath. The Spirit of God, the Ruach of God made me. The breath of the Almighty has given me life. <laughs> and this is now what Jesus is breathing on them. Receive this Holy Spirit, the Ruach and the Neshma, the Spirit of grace and truth. The Ruach is the Spirit of truth. The Neshma is the Spirit of grace. 
the law was given by Moses. The law was truth. But grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Because the grace comes out of the mercy. He breathed on them, receive ye the Holy Spirit. Whosoever sins, you remit. It literally just, the Greek is, it just means forgive. Whosoever sins, you forgive. They are forgiven. Is that what Jesus did for us? Oh, I can't do that. Only Jesus can do that. Um, he's now in you, and he breathed on you. Receive the Holy Spirit. As the Father has sent me, even now do I send you into the way of peace. The way of peace they have not known. To walk in the steps of Christ. In the priesthood. You breathed on them, receive you the Holy Spirit. Whosoever sins you forgive, they are forgiven. That's what I did. I took it there before the Father. And whosoever sins you retain, the King James says, if you look at that Greek word, it literally means to take. It means to take possession. Did Jesus take our sins upon himself? He did. And then he said, Father, forgive them. And it was the acceptable sacrifice. This is the priesthood. Come up higher. Come up higher. You see, in Psalm 85... Verse 9, second part of that verse says that glory may dwell in our land, mercy and truth have met together. Those are, those are the eternal paths. So it's you step into mercy, you step into truth. And if you continue down that path, you are walking in the way of peace. So Psalm 85, 9b says that mercy, that glory may dwell in our land, Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed. What is righteousness and peace kissing? It's the order of Melchizedek. It's the priesthood. It's the Melchizedek priesthood. It says in Hebrews that, that Melchizedek was king of righteousness, king of peace. Righteousness and peace kiss in the order of Melchizedek, the priesthood of the order of Melchizedek. But it, there's more here, okay? Righteousness and peace kissing is speaking of the way of righteousness and the way of peace. Our journey back to him is in, it begins in the way of righteousness. Jesus said of John that he came in the way of righteousness. So we hear and we turn and behold the Lamb. That's the way of righteousness, beholding the cross, beholding the mercy, that first love drawing us back in. And our response as we turn and then take that step into that mercy, we're entering into the way of righteousness. But we're not only supposed to receive that mercy. As we continue walking, we're to become that mercy towards all men. Be therefore merciful as my Father in heaven is merciful. That means you forgive everybody. You don't have any anger, bitterness, anything in your heart. He, can't have, he doesn't have anything in you there. Because if, if, unless you can walk in that place, you can't be that perfect intercessor. <laughs> If somebody says something nasty about you and you're like, Rah! you know, um, there's something still there. <laughs> and you just say, search me, oh God, and repent and cleanse it out of me, Father. Burn it out. But when you begin to get the revelation of who Jesus is, who, what this love is, it begin, it, the revelation transforms you.
You're allowing him to search your heart. If you're living from this place of revelation, if you're abiding before the lampstand, the menorah, the seven spirits of God, and allowing it, the seven eyes of the Lord to look into your heart, you're inviting it. You're inviting the revelation of the revelation of his love, this perfect love. And it transforms you if you'll live in that place, if you'll meditate on his word. Allow that spirit of truth to enter into you. And as you behold the lamb, as you behold the cross, that revelation of that mercy comes into you. Spirit of grace coming up out of that. And grace and truth are meeting. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So our journey begins in the way of the Lord, in the way of righteousness. We turn and we take that first step into mercy. That's outer court still. But when we take that next step into truth, we've stepped into the inner court of the, of the holy place. See, truth, sanctify them by thy truth, John 17, 7, 17, 17. Make them holy by your truth. As we step into the holy place and receive the revelation of the lampstand, receive our daily bread, we're being set apart, sanctified. That's that second step. We step into holiness. We set ourselves apart from the world. We turn away from the world. And to behold the revelation of truth. The first step in mercy is to the cross. The second step we take in truth, we enter into the holy place. See, these are the eternal paths, mercy and truth. But as we take that next step, we are entering into the way of peace. As we not only receive that mercy, we begin that revelations coming into our heart of what this love is. And we begin to walk in it. He, this light begins to remove these things out of our heart, this revelation. What are the ways of the Lord again? The ways of righteousness holiness, and peace. The way of righteousness is outer court. It begins there where we turn and we step into that mercy. And then we step into the holy place, which is the way of holiness, the highway of holiness, as we step into truth and abide there. The ways of the Lord are righteousness, holiness, and peace. See, the way of peace is in the holiest of all. It's peace is bringing things back together. It's reconciling. It's making at one mint. And so when we step into the way of peace and we walk in that, we're actually abiding in the holiest of all. Abiding a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. He who overcomes... He who overcomes, Jesus said, in Revelation chapter 3, is it verse 12 maybe? He who overcomes, will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he will go no more out. This is this priesthood. See, what is the ironic blessings of Numbers chapter 6, verses 23, 24? The Lord bless you and keep you. That's, that's outer court. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. That's inner court. That's the lampstand shining upon you. That's the light of his face. What's the light of his face? The revelation of who he is, of this love, of truth coming into your heart through the seven spirits of God. This perfect love. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. What's And then what's the next one? The Lord lift up his face upon you. That's identity. That's him coming upon you. So you walk in his very steps in the full revelation. The Lord lift up his face upon you and give you peace. See, 
and Melchizedek, righteousness and peace, kiss, the, the ways of righteousness, because the journey began in the way of righteousness, entered into the holiness, and then met with the way of peace. There is righteousness and peace kissing where we have become this priesthood. We are to be lambs led to the slaughter. We're to lay down our lives for others, for our enemies. But we have to see who we are, and then we can begin to see who other people are. We got to allow him to remove those things out of our heart. Bitterness, anger, unforgiveness. That will happen if you walk in the revelation of his love. If you meditate on his word. And invite Holy Spirit to search your heart. That's what David continually did. Search me, O oh God. See if there's any wicked way in me. Psalm 139, David said, O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. Because David invited him to search his heart and you have known me. Isn't that interesting? You know what Jesus said to the foolish virgins? He says, I don't know you. Meaning they never gave him the invitation to really search their hearts. That's what he's saying. You can say, he knows everybody. No, he's talking about an intimate thing, allowing his revelation to penetrate into your heart and coming one with him. I mean, they were virgins. They, they were seeking after him, but yet they didn't allow. They didn't say, oh, search my heart, oh God. You have searched me and known me. You know my down city and my uprising, David says. You understand my thought afar off. You compasses my path. You winnoweth my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, you know it altogether. You beset me behind and before and have laid your hand upon me. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain. What's, he talk, what's David talking about? To know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. How did that happen? He allowed the Lord to search his heart and those things began to come out and he could begin to walk in the paths of mercy and truth. He could walk in the ways of the Lord, the way of righteousness, holiness, and peace. All of them merging together into the priesthood. Our journey back to becoming this love. That is the tabernacle of David. That is our journey through the tabernacle of David from the way of righteousness and then merging with the highway of holiness and then all those three merging in the way of peace and the steps of Jesus, the most narrow path of mercy and truth. It's pretty simple. Mercy, truth, mercy, truth. You not only see yourself that way, but you see all men that way, friends and enemies. lambs to the slaughter. This is the way of peace. Will you lay down your life for this? This is what we're called to, the priesthood of the order of Melchizedek. And I'll just close in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18. Where it says, wherefore God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise, I think it's verse 18, the immutability, the unchangeableness of his counsel, confirmed by an oath that by two immutable, unchangeable things by which it is impossible for God to lie. These two immutable things are the two immutable things of the covenant. What are those? It's the Lord's table. It's the bread and the wine. It is the mercy and the truth. The mercy is the blood of the covenant. It's to lay down your life for another. We got the blood of the covenant, the mercy of the covenant, and we have the truth or the promises or the oath of the covenant. What is the truth of the covenant? 
this is who you really are. Christ is the promise. He is our identity. The promise of Christ in us becoming a reality of walking in that, restoring us back to our true identity in him. Wherefore, God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed by an oath, that by two immutable things by which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. What is that hope? Christ in you, the hope of glory, the king of glory coming in and inhabiting a people that will walk in his very steps, that the glory of the Lord may cover the earth even as the waters cover the sea. we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters in behind the veil into the holiest of all in this way of peace. Enters in behind the veil, whether the forerunner, if there's a forerunner, that means we're supposed to come after him in this priesthood, whether the forerunner is for us entered, Jesus Christ, the high priest, forever after the order of Melchizedek. What did Melchizedek bring forth to Abram after the slaughter of the kings? Bread and wine, mercy and truth. This covenant to become this love, to walk in these very steps in the priesthood, to restore our identity and to restore other people's identity as we take them before the throne of God. When we forgive their sins, when we we take that before the Father and say, Father, dismiss this case so that the enemy has no access there. It releases grace into that person's life. It opens a window of grace where the Holy Spirit can speak to that person. Maybe they respond, maybe they don't. But it opens a window of heaven into that person's life. that you can win them. Holy Spirit, thank you for teaching us. That we may walk in the ways, your ways. That we may walk in your very steps. That we may walk in the way of peace, that it may be said the way of peace they have known. This people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. Peace, peace. Shalom, shalom.